Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Sean, I'm here with another video. And uh, I got a couple questions uh, on my email. I'll start leaving them on this uh, channel about the profiles, because there's people that grew up playing with these things. And they asked me why I stopped playing with them. And uh, well, one, they're really outdated. They're, they're older rackets, but for the time that they made them, these are elite rackets and they're still hold up today's standards. Uh, what I like about the profile rackets is, uh, well, this is a 95 square inch bracket. Um, I like the stiffness, and if you're not a person that has like a natural, uh, you know, strong return of serve, or you play against people that have huge serves, this will uh, this will give you an advantage because all you do is like, all you gotta do is get your racket on this ball on with this racket on the ball, and it's going back over. And um, I had both these rackets were strong. These are my rackets I used to play with. Another thing is this is a this is really um, you know I didn't modify it or nothing. This is really uh, handle heavy. You can see it; it's handle heavy. So, and then the way I used to play, like I told you before, is I have an Eastern grip, and this grip's a little big for me now. But I, I mean, it's four and a half. But I played all my life for the four and a half. I used to bring the racket back and then hit through it. And as you can see, it's just enough top spin with the Eastern grip to give it a uh, to get it over the net. But it being a wide body, you know, you're gonna miss hit a lot of shots if you're trying to play with modern style play. But the radius on this thing is 95. So if you get good hitting with this racket, your eye and hand coordination stuff will, will, will transfer over to this other, these other modern rackets, which what I mean by modern, the thinner, you see the difference between this, the, the, this thing here, how, how thin they are, compared how that's thinner compared to this. And this is like almost, this is 13 ounces or over 13 ounces in, you know, 200 or 300 and something plus 50 something grams. It's a heavier racket. This racket here is uh, under 10 ounces. It's like 9.7 ounces and it's head heavy. So if you're really beginning or just a, you know, even a good player, um, teach that I own, they have, everybody has their own style of play and you know how they hit the ball. But for me, I would I would uh, say that having a racket head heavy is a, is going to help people learn how to hit with topspin naturally because the racket will just drop. You know, you go back, you drop. It'll drop back automatically. So when you hit through it, it'll automatically give you topspin even with your you know eastern or semi-western grip, whatever grip you have. Where that this racket here, you really have to be precise and accurate. And like the way I played was that way. It was straight, you know, like Jimmy Connors type, the flatness, uh, you know, um, John McEnroe style. That, that's the era I grew up in. So when I was growing up in the 80s, we started hitting with topspin. People, people already figured out the grips and all that by then. But you don't have the access to the internet like you do now. Now I'm uh, I'm really accurate with this racket on serve, and I can hit the stones probably a lot more than I can with this new one. And also, you know, we're changing our style of serving because I'm 52 now. I can't really bend in and get I re like get down with the flexibility to hit the ball with the way I would need to every time. You know, with the uh, with the new style of serving, uh, all I have to do is just you know bring my foot here the same motion everything's the same grip and I'm just throwing it up and then I'm hitting like that and I get an actual bend in my legs my feet my toes are pointing differently instead of like, oh, I used to serve like this my racket like that coming out and so like that and then I can hit like that and I serve really well that way So, my friends were saying uh, on the internet, I had gotten these strung a while back with these multi, uh, with hybrids. They're both top spin strings. The, the mains are, have, uh, they're at 16 gauge. They're top spin, uh, Wilson top spin. Uh, they used them at the US Open a few years back. I got those on the, the mains. And then the crosses are, are a, a modern version of that. 
and it has uh, it has durability and top speed and control. So they're 16 gauge, and I did um, I strung my racket, the mains on this at 48, and then the crosses at 44, and then this racket same 46. It's the same string, 46 uh, pounds on the on the mains, and then uh, 44 on the crosses. I string my rackets four pounds lighter on the main, on the crosses than I do the mains because the way I used to play I, I broke a lot of uh, racket I mean it broke a lot of strings and by doing that you actually make the racket the way it was supposed to be made it's more of an oval shape it's more you have more of a sweet spot and it's just uh, something I've been doing for a very long time so and then this racket here I'm not sure if you can get a, a, a hybrid on here because I only see two strings so this may be one of those rackets where you can only use a one pattern racket and if that's the case I probably wouldn't play this racket and what I'm doing is trying a bunch of different rackets out and then I'm gonna see about getting a racket customly made for my style of play in the way that I play in the way I like the racket I do like the racket to be a little bit head heavier a little bit but this you know there are there are people on this channel, on YouTube, at pro levels, if they use this racket, this and got, you know, they probably, you know, there's people that love the handles heavy, and if they use this racket and was got, got you know, real consistent, got comfortable using it, they would literally break tennis balls hitting the ball with this racket. That's how much power is in this thing. So let's do a couple things. It's starting to sprinkle rain, folks, but, um, we're gonna see if we can do a little training tonight. I've been training three nights in a row, and I also uh, walked very good. Uh, yes, I've been walking very good. And I just wanted to tell people, um, there's uh, there's people that say I uh, got a couple of friends that aren't haven't made themselves known yet on on here, um, but they watch the watch the channels, and they say they get bored and they're lonely. There's nobody around and stuff like that, and. You know, um, I have a very active mind, and I'm making a video of, of one of my dreams that I, I want to do. I already already video. I'm just going to download it later. So, um, I, I go to the Dollar Tree, and I'll find uh, they, they have a nice, a decent art supply. That, you know, a decent art selection there, and I'll find uh, books that have illustrations in them that you you know that you, you color in and draw in and whatever, or finish drawing with them, and I'll buy them along with a notebook and uh, I'll just doodle in that thing and it clears my mind and it helps me relax and you know I have one of my friends that travels around on the circuit and then they were saying stuff about you know being lonely and, and depressed and stuff and this is where alcoholism and all kinds of shit like that can come in play because the devil will make uh, work for idle hands so I, I suggested something like that and if they have kids and stuff they can draw and color these things in and send them to their children or whatever you know and then maybe the kids can do something together you know you both get the same book and color them in or whatever or if you live by yourself you can do that and uh you know if you go to church you can just donate the book or something for the kids to have or whatever but it's something for you personally to develop and what happens is you'll clear your mind and your mind won't be thinking of worldly things and you'll be able to develop a better connection spiritual connection to, to uh, Yahshua Hamashiach, the Christ Jesus. And reading the Bible, too, helps with that. So, um, and to each thy own. You don't have to be Christian or whatever, or, you know, whatever religion you are. You do need to have peace of mind, and especially if you're going through injuries, because your family and um, people in your life will mean well, and they'll always try to help you the best way they can. But they also tell you stuff that you can't do, and there's no such word as the word can't. You're just not able to do it right now, but you will do it later, or you're doing it as you speak. So, you know, reading and getting, having a hobby. It, people have to have a hobby, and that's why there is a lot of drug use and alcohol use, because people will come home from work, they ain't got nothing to do, or they don't want to, they don't know what to do, they hit themselves drinking and whatever else that comes along with that and it's boredom you know and it's not having a hobby so if you pick up hobbies like fishing uh you know um just go for walks doing some artwork doing some writing who knows you start writing a journal 
about your experiences in the world that you've already experienced and things that you're going through at the moment and coming, you know, things that are coming up. It helps you focus on your life at right now, like things you're doing right now. It also gets the burden off your mind if you don't have someone to speak to about these issues because some people live alone. They don't have anybody to, uh, or anybody they can trust or anything like that. So if you write a journal, and this stuff is under five bucks, folks. You can go down there to the Dollar Tree and spend five dollars, get a journal, get a pen, get a notebook, uh, you know, get a, get um, you know, the books, a book or something. And like I say, that like different artworks. There's all kinds of stuff in it. So that's what I do. It helps me focus, and it, and then obviously coming out here, and I don't care what anybody says about me. I never have. I don't have clicks and stuff like that. I was fairly popular in high school you know I had a lot of friends because I didn't a variety of different people because I did a lot of things I ran track I played football I played soccer I played tennis I surfed I did as much as I could as a youngster and I worked a job and went to college and school and all that and then my mom you know, got sick my grandparents got sick and I had to help take care of them but um, you know I had to take that part of my life out for like 20 years, I didn't have a social life, didn't have girlfriends and stuff. I had to deal with my family being ill and stuff. So now, like when my mom passed away uh, about over 10 years ago now, um, I took care of her. I have, my, my mind is clear of any, you know, anything because I've never done anything to her and I've always been cool with her. And she's, I love her with all my heart. And uh, I did what I could. She just had an embolism and, and it burst and uh, she passed away pretty quickly. And uh, of course, I'm devastated even to this day. Uh, but I know that uh, she's at peace. And also, I don't blame myself because a lot of people blame themselves for, for things that happen in life. And you literally got to look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself uh, once, you know, like uh, daily, really, tell yourself you love your, yourself because you are beating yourself up and you're not giving yourself any kind of compliments you're always thinking of things that you're doing and what happened to you and you can't change the past and even if you was to go back in the past and try to change it it won't come out the way you think it will so right now is the past like right now is you know the things that you've done um that made mistakes financial mistakes whatever that you think is a mistake it really isn't a mistake it's just that you didn't have the uh the proper information to make a correct decision at the time so that's why you feel that way. But you gotta let yourself go off of that. Don't blame yourself for anything and just be, do what you can do to try to help yourself get out of the situation you're in. If you're, you know, sick and stuff, just, you know, try to find out with your doctor what you're allowed to do and what you're, what you're, what you're capable of doing. And if you have a good chair at the house, you can do a little exercises on the chair, stretch your legs and stuff like that and do things like that. So, uh, I haven't hit any tennis balls. Let's get to, we'll go over here and start training. I just want to let you know I'm with you folks. And I've thought a lot of different ways to help myself to get out of things. You know, when I was in a wheelchair, I had to push, the, I, I would push the wheelchair and walk behind it instead of being in the wheelchair. You know, they, they were busting my balls. The doctor was like, you can't do this kid. I was like, no, 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 dude. No, 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 bro. I ain't sitting in no, no this ain't who I am. I, I, I'm too dumb to stay down. I don't ever quit. Um, so that's a good trait of mine and also, you know, being stubborn can be uh, a bad trait too But in this particular situation, we want to be stubborn and we want to love each ourselves and love each other We're all human beings. We're all gonna make mistakes And that's why I like about tennis you can come out here and everybody it doesn't matter where you're from it, It's a game that can be played and shared with everybody and um, you know in the level of respect and morality that's on most of the tennis courts, there's no 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 bad you know um not too many bad people play tennis and add, you know as a person you know that, that comes out and strives to start trouble most people are pretty cool and it's nice to meet people that uh, are and have the same interests as you and then you develop friendships and stuff so let's get to this i'm going to try i'm going to show you how accurate i can be with this and then this newer one is a little different I Florida, 
power. These tennis balls we got opened up last night. That was sweet. Man, we didn't see how much we could take the ball with this with these new ones and how much how, how high these things got compared to the other crappy balls we had. These are still a couple of used ones in there, but the majority of them are pretty new. Well, the new video from the butt last night. Got my puppy machine. They gave me for me to stop smoking cigarettes, so I'm trying those things out. Now, <clears throat> I always put rubber bands in my brackets. It's funny. I'm going to try uh, to right here. I think this is the one that's kind of real. It's a little bit uh, tighter. Yeah, I'll try that last. Now, I haven't hit the board. I haven't hit this racket in a while. Last time we hit, whoa, look at this one. See, the radius is far. This makes you gotta, you know, make you have to watch the ball more. You can get away with a uh, little bit of that. So, how close it comes. Okay, uh, as I was saying, when, when most people, when they're teaching you how to serve, they'll want you to serve from this side because this is the normal side of looking at where you're hitting it at. I just point my foot towards the target as I'm teaching you, and it's about to toss. Almost. Bad toss. I mean, I could have hit that and sliced it, but I don't mind trying to do that. See how much more accurate I am with this racket, even though that, that other racket's bigger? It's all because I've been playing with this racket most of my life. And I could probably hit the corner almost every time. Well, not every time, but a lot more closer than the other one. And this racket is full of hitting flat shots, really, and volume. So serving volume and hitting flat shots, you got your racket here. But the way my feet are standing, I'm standing and I'm pointing at the, at the target instead of pointing over here and trying to wind up and keep it simple. And, and it, it'll be a lot easier on you to develop as a player also. This is mini tennis, so I pra you practice here, then bring it back there, and then rotate back and forth until you get a rhythm on how you want to toss the ball. Plus, playing here in this area, will keep, you can work on your overhead. That's basically where overheads are at in this area anyway. So long. We're so flat. Racket, even though I was hitting it good, it's, it's just that I seem like I have more control on my turn with this racket. Let's see. This is the other one. It's a little bigger, as I said, and much lighter. Serve to hit when you're uh, when you're playing, you know, that's what you're, that's 
one of my favorite shows right there. One of my favorite ones to hit that. I seen the two the tennis, he was showing a video of him training his buddy. And uh, he hit a serve like that with a, you know, out. something I'm not gonna sit there and tell you I am good at it or do anything but what I like about tennis is a game you can actually come out and teach other people and you know it, your game speaks for itself I, I'll play against anybody I don't care I'm not playing against them anymore I'm playing the, 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 the poor you know and uh, I play pretty decent I have a good game and I enjoy playing a, a variety of different people you know, I, I, and the more uh, I practice, I haven't played in 20 something years, uh, almost 25 years, and I just started playing about five months ago or so, almost a half a year, lost 30 pounds, tried different brackets with everybody here, and I'm showing you different ways to help you your serve. I, you know, I'm the one that has to go through the agony of trying to figure it out, but uh, luckily there's good teachers on, 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 on YouTube, and also, I have been playing tennis for a long time, and I, and I used to help coach at the Ocean's Racquet Club, you know, pretty top-end players, and I um, played against pretty top-end players from different universities, and uh, I beat a few of these people pretty soundly, and uh, I've lost pretty soundly to a few of them too, but um, I figure them out. If I lose to somebody one time, the next time I play them, I'll have them figured out. But uh, it's all about how I play, you know, yeah, or, you know, if you're missing shots, that's the most ridiculous way to lose games is that the, if you're up, if you're uh, up 40-30 or 30-40, you're winning and you just need one point to win the game and you let that person off the hook, 
on a dumb shot or dumb shot selection, then that's what really hurts. That's why people lose lose sets because of that shot selection. Major, major thing. Let me go over here and get a couple of these things and we'll try a couple more. I have the other profile too that spun a little bit looser. And uh, man, hit with these new ball clubs. What a difference. We were hit with them crappy ones for a while. And they just did not turn the ball and stop and have the same type of crap ones I had before. Uh, the bags, what, you know, you go to Walmart and you can buy a bag of tennis balls. I think there's like 18 of them. And um, when you, um, then when you're done playing with the tennis balls, you get these bags, and I use the bags for a lot of different things. And a little, uh, I'll tell you one later. I can do some of my uh, bandanas and all kinds of stuff like that. So, as I said, I do like this racket. I like the big hits because I would make this same style racket they have here, but at a hundred, at a hundred, and.
big man came off the ground that time, folks. by the light. Let's see what's so fun about these rackets as I'll show you. When you're, when I used to rally people, they need a lot of top spin. And I would just be top spinning and I hit, you know, back over to them. And get back over to them, just like that. And then I'd go. And you see how flat it is? And how I almost hit the, I go for the lines. As I say, I use those, those uh, cones to practice going for the lines. But in the middle of a rally where people are getting comfortable you know, sought you out. And the only time you really want to hit down a line is you got a flat shot. Oh, sorry. You got a flat shot. And you hit down the line. You know, that wasn't a good one. That person gets down the line. You're standing here. They're going to whip it cross court, and you're going to have to have some wheels to get to it. So if you get a shot down the line, you hit it. Oh, uh, sorry. You hit it and it hits like that. And it comes within that. Be prepared to get back in the middle of court. Like don't stand there. Don't stand there and admire your hooky side. And get back in the middle of court. And be prepared. Because you got season season from here. And if you're playing somebody that's really good and they see you, because they're already gonna know you do that. So you're you're going, oh, got it up cross court, we're hitting cross court, everything's groovy. And you can see why I'm using the other racket because it's very easy to hit, miss hit with this racket. Especially when you start getting into Western grips. Like if I see one, two, 
is one, two, three. This is what, how I'm holding it now. And if I turn it over a little bit and put a semi-western, you really gotta watch the ball. I mean, even though I'm hitting good with it, and I tie, like I told you, I'll flip from eastern to western, depending on the shot. If you miss, if you don't pay attention to the ball and watch the ball come off the racket, you are gonna miss hit the ball off the frame. And even if you are watching the ball off the racket, this is a 95 inch square inch one. So it's a lot smaller than the ones that most modern people are playing, you know, most rackets move. Most people are playing with a hundred square inch and that does make a difference. But if you just bring your racket back and you're just hitting through it, you know, like old school, like I do, and then you want to try to make an adjustment on your, on your, hit it with a western spin. Yeah, it still gives you, still gives you enough, you know, clearance but you got more spin on it, top spin. Three balls come in, and you go, you know, you hit in doubles or whatever, and the person's coming in the that, and you got a ball, and you try, you can hit, you know, hit, hit a uh, lob. But you have to watch the ball come off the racket, and it is a heavier racket. So as I said, I love everything about this racket, except the, the fact that it, the weight's in the handle, and also it's a little heavy and it's a little thick if they could make this racket where it's not like that a little thinner and you know the balance more in the head of the racket that's the fear folks that's a lot so yeah you practice hitting those balls like that and practice serving and volley for 10 and volley you can work on a lot of different things I like I haven't hit with this racket in a while, you know. It's been a little while since I practiced with this racket, but I've played with this 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 same racket for 30 years or more, you know, like a long time. So I know how the racket plays. I know how it touches, and that's why I say if you're playing doubles and you're my age or whatever, and you play a lot of doubles, and the people you're playing doubles against are good at hitting returns, you know, like. They're not uh, good at volleying, and you're just a little better at volleying, but they're 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 hitting the ball so hard the ball's just bouncing off the racket. Not with this one. This racket will absorb absorb any of the power that's being hit. This is a flat one, but it'll absorb the power even as big as thick as it is. See? So when you're you know even you're back here and you have to hit a drop shot. Oh, that's a high one, but. You can put spin on the ball. As you can see, you see the spin on it? Get in that back. Uh, spin with the backhand. You know, you can hit you can hit approach shots, uh, you know, uh, approach shots like that with spin on this thing. And then somebody, you know, if you got the net, and you ball in, and they blast the ball out here, their ball's coming, you can just, you know, just absorb their shot right off to right off your racket and probably even have to hit the ball. I mean, you just barely hit it. It was over. I mean, I barely touched it. I had to put spin on it. Same here. Ball come. You know, a little drop. The racket does all the work because it's so heavy. Such a heavy racket. Uh, and stiff. That's what it's made for. That's why I can crack some of the curves like that because the racket itself is so stiff it gives me the, uh, the, a little bit of help that I need without my having the most of my power because of my disability. But the, the racket head small and it's a heavy racket so it is hard to hit kick serves and stuff like that with this racket because of the thickness of the racket. I'll try a few kick serves over there so we can see how ball how high the ball kicks over with this racket and then I'll compare it to the other one. Yeah it's good to come out here and practice. Like I like I say I go to the dollar I can go to the uh, 
as well. This one's the most inclined with the racket. They mess around with it. And uh, these are the ones I like the most out of all of them, you know? And we're gonna see if I can get a racket made somewhere to the racket that I've tried out, you know? So, we're gonna try get a new one here. I'm going to try a couple different fries and so I'm going to try a new try to kick so with this thing. And hopefully I don't hit it off the frame because this is a, a big this is a big one here, buddy. that come over the bottom of the ball. I 
hit with a Continental. You can't hit the top hill with a Continental. But here's what the, here's the difference with the Eastern grip. And then the Western. You get a lot of angle with the Western grip and top spin. That's a semi-Western, by the way. And as I said, I mix back and forth depending on what stock selection I'm trying to hit. And then I disguise my places with my backhand. But I definitely love the power that this lap is me, and I love the, the control on it. I'm going to say it, it's a little heavy. But you can get a lot of power, and you can hit the ball with a lot of you know, speed by just barely touching the ball, really. I'm not even coming off the ground on any of my serves. I'm just the arm serve. Move this out of the way a little bit. That's the other thing. If you can serve the ball with a big old basket in the middle of your serve, Baby, uh, I told you I'm a patient person. There's two of them, and as I say, uh, working back and forth to keep profile. And when I play doubles with the during the day, I use the blue one because really, uh, the ace group that I'm playing against, I don't want to hit anything really hard because if I miss the ball, I can hurt somebody. And uh, I don't want to do that. But same thing. Got my feet not twisting and all that crazy stuff. Then come around that first. What I mean by come around that is I got my turn out grip and I hit the ball and it's in contact. But I finish coming down around with my hands like that. I'll show you.
Western, and you have to really just use the kind of racket in to try to get kick serves and stuff. the ball with that with that profile and I want to get one of my friends to come out here so we can do some hitting and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this pawn hitting like that with this with the racket that I have. Even one. I just like doing it. I just uh it I got an old school style of play, that's how I learned how to play. And that's why most of the time when I play against these people in here with a lot of top spin, I'm on side the base inside like I'm on top of the baseline because that's how I start up playing. And it throws them off a little bit. I got used to that. And myself I have to get used to people hitting with a lot of top spin also. So it suffice both situations. But when I go for my shots for winners, they're a lot different than uh, more modern people are hitting with excessive amount of top spin to hit the winner and I just bring my racket back and hit through it with a you know angle like I was showing you earlier I use angles and I also figure out you know strategy if I hit this shot what's going to happen afterwards when that person gets it so that's why I tell you to recover in the middle of the court and that way you can uh, have your best chances to uh, to get the ball back and play you know I had a lot of fun folks I'm gonna do this more and uh, I appreciate all my friends and family that watch these videos and uh, I know I do a lot of my videos but the parts you guys don't see is afterwards I mean a lot of pain I get to stretch out and stuff my, my stomach literally you know my hernia literally comes out so I gotta literally put my finger in my belly button and stick, push it back in and then just of recent time I got a wiggly tooth and I have to get it pulled 52 years don't have to go to the dentist and then all of a sudden I got to get to a dentist and have them take out one of my tooths that we that are wiggly so uh, I mean I'm doing pretty good these are just things that happen in life as you get older it isn't like I don't take care of my teeth I brush my teeth with the best toothpaste I can buy and get the best off you know I always been doing that and uh, use baking soda all that stuff so you know it's sometimes when you get older things are gonna happen that's why I made this channel for other guys and ladies that are getting up there in Asia a little bit and they're feeling that they're not able to do stuff and people that are literally disabled like myself don't let anybody uh, tell you what you can do you just do your best that's all that's all anybody can ask of anybody you do your best and uh, you know enjoy your life and don't say well God's bringing me blessings no, every time, every day, every second of the moment, as soon as you wake your eyes up, even when you're asleep, you're being blessed by God. You just have to accept it and 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 and, and, and take it and say, hey, thank you, Lord, for these blessings. Every, you know, just accept it. Don't be so prideful and say, I can do everything myself. That's that's what's up, you know. So you're being blessed every second. You just let it happen to you. Let the positivity of God's love come into your heart and heal you. Don't, don't let negative things come in to, to, you know. You have to know what's going on outside the world so you can make a, a plan of action. All, you know, you have a family, you have kids and stuff. You got to make sure they're safe. 
for what's coming. So, and this is facts. It's this is inevitable. Every every society crumbles at one point. Everything that you're standing on, and even your house you're built on, somebody else had a house there years before you were there. Somebody else had landscape before you were there. Somebody else had cities where you're at before you were there. Oh, everything was somewhere. You know, it's just how the world is. We build over all the things, and you know that's why you have to take time to get away from all that crazy stuff that's going on in the world, the fake realities of, of this matrix or whatever uh, that guy is talking about. It, what they mean by matrix is you just get up in the morning, you work a job, you come home, no hobbies, nothing, can barely afford to live, and people are disabled and can't get proper medical treatment in this country, things like that. And no one questions anything. It's just like a, a playing the game, and there's other people in the game that are a player, uh, CPUs or something like that, Put non-player, non-players or whatever, MPs, they call them whatever. But well, that's what this guy's talking about, the Matrix. Everybody's stuck in this thing, which you don't have to be. You know, just you, you just do your life and know that you are a special individual. Every person is a special individual. They're made in, in the image and likeness of God. And God loves you so much. He said his only God son for you, uh, for your sins, and for you to have a good life. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to help each other we're supposed to make sure we're, we're taken care of and make sure you love yourself and take care of yourself too don't beat yourself up and don't hurt you know don't hurt yourself mentally by saying oh you're dumb or i can't do this or right that's not how we, we do things we're doing things different I mean, I, i've just seen it so many times i've seen younger guys young women because of the social media stuff they don't think themselves worthy of anything and let me let me tell you most of the people you're talking to on this on this computer they're fake people they're not who they are they're not they're just a fake there's nothing real about them okay and it may sometimes literally there is nothing real with them they're computer people so don't don't bother uh you know wasting your time with people like that just move on so i appreciate everybody watching you guys are doing great i'm proud of everybody my friend stefan and my friend nathan they're doing great everybody's doing great and uh, share your experiences with us Tell us some exercises with some you know, comments in the section. And uh, please like and subscribe. And um, I'm never asking for no money. I don't need nothing. I'm just here to help. And I'm here to share my training that I'm going to be I'm doing so I can play in the tournament coming up. So that's my goal. And uh, we'll see what happens after that. Okay. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. And uh, i got to get going because it's a little rain, folks. This little rain coming down. And I just bought these tennis balls. And I don't want them to get wet.